So a while ago I made a video talking about DPS in Overwatch and kind of mentioned that there is a bit of a problem in I guess the number of DPS and uh, some other problems about DPS as a class in general. But I today wanted to go over the DPS problem in general and talk about is it still a problem? Where is it a problem? Where does where is it not a problem I guess? And finally, say is it a real thing or I guess a myth that people just kind of say all the time. With all that said, let's get started. So the first thing I kind of want to talk about is that statistically, yes, there is a DPS problem in this game. And I think it's very easy to go out and see. I mean, if you look at the most played heroes, of course, there are going to be some tanks, there are going to be some supports. But mainly, there's a lot of DPS characters. There's overall a unequal amount of DPS characters being played to the other roles. And that's just kind of undisputable. It's just kind of what's going on. And I think it's because the DPS characters can fit more team comps and you can go triple DPS without way too much trouble. You can carry your games as triple DPS and a lot of people just find it simply more fun because their role is to focus on getting kills. But I would like to say that even though I guess you could say there's a problem there, the majority of people do want to play DPS, there is oftentimes more support and tank players than you'd actually think. I mean, if you look up the actual t statistics again, while there isn't as much tank players or as much support players, there is still a decent chunk of them in the community, and I think that's kind of interesting to see. And as well, for certain characters, they actually have huge play rates and even higher play rates than some of the DPS. I mean, if you look at Mercy, D.Va, Anna, all those characters, there's a lot of people picking them up and a lot of people playing them and, the, and your chance to see one of those in your games is actually pretty high compared to even seeing a certain DPS player. So kind of keep that in mind. I think that there are too many DPS players, but as well, there are still a lot of other players playing and don't expect every single game to just have DPS players because honestly, if you have that mindset, that's just kind of not how the player base is distributed. And I've had many games where I have no DPS players and I guess that can kind of be a problem in itself, but I'll talk about that in a future video. Now, another thing I would like to talk about is the fact that I don't really think that the DPS problem exists as much in certain ranks. And let me go over this right here. So I think in very low ranks, that is <laughs> very low ranks like bronze, silver, and bottom half of gold. When I played in that with some of my really low ranked friends, there's actually a decent amount of DPS players that will swap off of that role. And in very high ranks, I feel like, you know, masters, grandmasters, top 500, kind of around that ranks, there's also a decent amount of players that are willing, maybe they won't always, but they're willing to also switch off a of DPS and play other ranks or play other roles because they really want to rank up because I think those are two of the most um, very, I guess, important or most stressful ranks to try to win games in. And as far as my own experience goes, those are the two ranks that I see people switching off DPS and fitting team cons the most often. The ones that I see doing it the least often are probably high gold to diamond, just about anywhere in diamond, because people want to carry in these ranks. People think that they're good enough that they can probably become the best, but at the same time, their teammates are just holding them down. They really just need to play DPS, carry those matches. And honestly, in my experience, yeah, that has kind of been where the main DPS problem is. And that's a problem because, yeah, the majority of players are playing in, you know, gold, silver, I guess gold, um, platinum, and diamond. So a lot of people kind of get the idea that just every DPS player is never going to switch. And I feel like while in those certain middle ranks, yeah, it's it's definitely worse than other ranks. I think in quite a few ranks, you honestly don't have that much of a problem. Or at least for me, I don't have that much of a problem um, when I am playing tank. Most of the time, my team comps can actually end out going pretty well. And I will say, yeah, of course, there are a lot of games with one tricks in the top ranks and the bottom ranks. But it seems like the average player is more likely to switch than in the middle ranks, at least again from my own personal experience. So keep that in mind as well. This is just all of my own experience. Now, let me go back to a point that I just mentioned. Um, the idea of being able to carry a game and control a game. Obviously, a lot of people in the mid rank really want to do that. I mean, everybody in every rank wants to do that. But personally, carrying a game, I think those middle ranks mainly focus on that. And I think in Overwatch, the DPS feel and probably actually do have the most control over a game. So a lot of people want to play this role. Other roles do have a lot of impact. Other roles do have a lot of importance and you can actually win and carry with other roles. But I feel like other roles oftentimes feel like you're just helping and assisting in your DPS winning that game while playing DPS themselves is a lot more enjoyable to people because you're the one getting in there, doing the dirty work, getting the kills, winning that match for your team. And while in many cases, again, support and tank classes can do a lot, their class kits and their whole meaning of existence is, I guess, kind of to do some damage, but mainly to 
proc up the DPS to make so that they can do their job to give them space, to give them healings, to give damage boost, to give crowd control, to give all that on a silver pattern of the DPS and hope that they can kind of finish it off with the damage needed. But something I'm going to say is that even if your DPS isn't that great and even if you have a really bad problem with your DPSs, a lot of the times the supports and the tanks can actually proc each other up as well. And I think a really good example of this would be Brigitte and Reinhardt. Those characters, of course, do create a lot of space for a DPS, and if they have a Reaper that's coming in with them, that's great, that can work. But even without really anything else, those two characters can go in together, can help each other out, can shield, can do damage, can apply a lot of pressure, can get a lot of kills, can time their ultimates well together, and even if you don't have that great of DPS, you have to remember that a lot of the times if you synergize with the other supports or with the other tanks, you can win a game in that case. And I feel like if you're a player that just doesn't know exactly what to do and you really just don't have any DPS friends, realize that, yeah, sometimes dual queuing with a tank or with a support could also help you win because these characters, at least if you pick good synergies, can still help carry games and can still help win games. Another example, of course, is the classic Winston Lucio. Jump on the enemy backline, get some kills. Please make sure to keep that in mind because, yeah, you are kind of just trying to proc the DPS up, but you can as well proc each other up, which is something that you just can't forget when you're talking about this game. And I think a, a good example, I guess, as well about proccing each other up and how effective that can be is the triple tank or the quad tank. And when you look into Overwatch and you see that there's metas and there's times, and even right now, where you can go three tanks or four tanks and still win that game, you should kind of be able to see how DPS maybe aren't a huge necessity. Maybe you don't need your DPS at all corners, at all times, to win that game. Sure, they are nice, sure you want that damage, and sure the one that can get more picks and is more consistent will be more useful to your team. I can't argue against that, that's just pure basic knowledge. But, a lot of times you can win without them popping off, and I think, again, looking at triple or quad tank, yeah, it, it kind of shows that, that having not even a great DPS or not even any DPS at all, you can still proc each other up, you can still deal damage, and yeah, I think that's kind of awesome to keep in mind when you are playing other roles. And as a DPS player, that might be kind of nice to keep in mind because, yeah, your teammates, even if you aren't doing that well, might still be able to win that game. Of course, you want to try to do the best you can. You want to try to help your team the best you can. But if you're having a bad game, it isn't all over immediately. And I think that's kind of nice for both sides to kind of keep in mind uh, when going with that. Now, let's kind of switch gears for a quick second. And I feel like that something I should mention about Overwatch and about some of the new heroes is that I feel like they're making so that they don't really rely on the DPS as much as they used to. I mean, if you look at, let's say, even Anna versus Mercy, you can see what one relies more on the DPS. Of course, Anna still does need help from the DPS, but she can kind of do some stuff by herself. And then if you compare Anna to Mora, well, Mora, of course, does heal up the DPS, does heal up the tanks, does a lot of that, but does a little bit more damage now. And now if you look even further into the future with Brigitte, um, well, she does damage, she does healing, and she's actually pretty self-dependent. And I feel like as time goes on, the game is adding more self-dependent tanks, more self-dependent supports, I guess not tanks, but mainly just supports, and that makes so that I think you don't really have to rely quite as much on your DPS, and having not the best DPS becomes slightly less of a problem, and even having just too many DPS also becomes less of a problem, because you can do more to keep yourself alive without tanks, you can do more to affect the game, and of course you can still play any character you want to, but I think adding these new characters that are kind of self-dependent does, in some ways, actually kind of help with this problem of having too many DPS or having too many players that don't want to switch off of DPS. And I guess I want to say with my final statement, the really big thing that I think makes a lot of people think that the DPS are a problem is the fact that I think the average DPS has to be much more experienced with their character and put in a lot more time than the average support or the average tank of that rank. And that's at least from my own experience. Because the average DPS is playing against a lot more people trying to get that character, a lot more people trying to get that role, and as well, a lot more bad team comps because other people won't switch off a DPS. And if you aren't going to switch as well, well, you got to play with a lot of team comps that maybe just aren't the best, let's be honest here. And I think that kind of makes so that a lot of them do have to become better. But just because they're in that situation and just because they've had to put in a lot of time and effort to get better doesn't mean that they're going to do great every single game. And you should kind of realize that, yeah, it would be nice if the DPS was great. Yeah, it would be nice if the DPS would switch off of that third DPS for once. But you can win just about any situation, honestly, in this game. 
and especially the high ranks, the low ranks, it doesn't really matter. You see all the time Symmetra, Torb, Duo Qs, and Top 500. At the same time, you see whatever in the bottom ranks. I think everything kind of works whatever, and honestly, you just shouldn't get too mad at any role, DPS included with that. And there you guys go, that's at least my own personal opinions about all this, about the DPS problem. Again, I would personally wish that we'd have more players playing other roles, maybe as more tanks come out, maybe more supports come out, some of the DPS players will switch. But I think kind of just how the game is made in general, where kills feel so important and are really fun to get, I, I don't really know. I feel like it's one of those games where we're always going to have this problem, but you can kind of talk about it, kind of minimize it, and hopefully just more DPS players will learn to fill sometimes. Not even all the time. Let's just say one out of three games where there's triple DPS you fill. That would be pretty awesome as well. Anyways, as always, guys, thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure to leave a like, comment down below your own personal opinions in the comment section down below. Press that subscribe button to see more videos like this in the future. And as always, guys, have a wonderful day.